Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarbul Fatih. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa praised the Kingdom's citizens and residents for their perseverance and commitment to vigilantly follow precautionary COVID-19 measures over the past period, which has had a positive impact on decreasing the amount of daily active cases. His Royal Highness noted that the decrease in active cases over the past period indicates the Kingdom is moving in the right direction direction urging citizens and residents to continue following measures to maintain the downward trajectories of cases. The Crown Prince highlighted that this commitment over the past four weeks especially has yielded a 45 percent decrease in daily active cases and stressed the importance of the civic responsibility shared by all to continue following measures to safeguard one's family and the wider community. He underscored the importance of all to continue following and observing the precautionary measures issued by both the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus and the Ministry of Health in order to combat and eradicate the virus. His Royal Highness concluded by reiterating his gratitude to first responders, including medical professionals and supporting staff for their continued efforts towards combating the spread of the virus and safeguarding all in the kingdom. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Fawziya Zainal, affirmed that the Council's support for the process of comprehensive development is ongoing under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, as per the constitutional and legal practices, and based on mutual respect and cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities for the benefit of the country and the citizens. In reference to the Council's bureau meeting, the Speaker said that Council members will continue to work in the spirit of unity in order to support the and execute the content of His Majesty's speech, which she said contained noble principles, wise vision, and pioneering projects to serve the country and its future. During the meeting, the Bureau displayed lists of nominees to form a committee to respond to His Majesty's speech along with an executive committee. The committee also affirmed the agenda of the next parliamentary session to be held next week. Labour and Social Development Minister Jamil bin Mohammed Hamidan attended the Labour and Social Development Ministry signing of six MOUs with private training institutes and institutions which will provide remote training courses for Bahraini job seekers. The minister stressed the importance of enhancing cooperation with private training institutions to develop national human resources. He highlighted the need to continue the training process through investing in modern technology to hold remote training sessions in light of the exceptional circumstances the world is currently going through as a result of the spread of COVID-19. Hamidan highlighted the Labour Ministry's constant keenness to provide the best training services that meet the needs of national competencies in order to qualify them and facilitate their integration into private sector facilities. Officials of private training institutes lauded the Labour Ministry's support for them in order to be able to overcome the obstacles facing them and express their readiness to enhance the level of training services delivered by the Labour Ministry to citizens. Minister of Labour and Social Development Jamil bin Mohammed Hamidan participated in the sixth meeting of the GCC Social Development Ministers Committee, which was held remotely under the presidency of the UAE Minister of Social Development, Hassa bin Zaisa Bouhmid, the chairperson of the current session. The meeting shed light on the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on family stability and the situation of low-income groups in the Gulf communities. It also highlighted all efforts undertaken by the GCC countries to curtail the impact of the pandemic on the GCC nationals and the voluntary efforts of the civil society organizations to support the government, the precautionary measures to protect families and the society, especially people with special needs, the elderly and low-income families. 
The Minister of Health, Faiqa Saleh, chaired the second meeting to select the winner of the Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa Award for the Bahraini Doctor, which was held virtually and was attended by the members of the awards jury committee from Bahrain and abroad. The minister welcomed the attendees and expressed thanks and appreciation for their efforts to help in the nomination process of the awards in its two categories. During the meeting, the results of the primary nominations were discussed along with the mechanisms for nomination and selection of the winners of the award. The first category of the award will be granted to three Bahraini doctors who had conducted scientific research, whereas the second category will be granted to those who with innovative achievements in the medical field. The members of the committee praised the assessment mechanism in place which has been successful and said that they feel honored to be members of this award. They said that the award represents an important initiative that reflects Bahrain's keen interest in developing the medical sector and to encourage those who work in this sector to innovate. The members of the committee affirmed that the award will have a positive impact on the health sector in Bahrain and across the region. At the end of the meeting, the minister expressed a thanks and appreciation for all participating doctors who have applied for the award. The minister affirmed the importance of this award, which is intended to recognize the sacrifices of the medical workers and wish them further success. The Kingdom of Bahrain made a new health achievement for being the first Gulf country to celebrate the World Patient Safety Day announced by the World Health Organization in September 2019 by organizing a patient safety convention which concluded recently. Consultant of Infections and Internal Diseases at Salmania Medical Complex, member of the National Task Force to Combat the Coronavirus and key speaker at the convention, Dr. Jamila Salman said that the COVID-19 pandemic is the reason for the primary focus of the conference on infection prevention and control. She highlighted the recommendations made at the conclusion of the convention to include a workshop of practical training on the main topics it discussed, expanding the discussion of the topics of antibiotic supervision, training on how to build a program and quality indicators to follow up on them, and following up the latest developments and updates in the field of disaster management based on lessons learned from COVID-19, in addition to planning throughout the year for seminars and workshops on the same topics that will be covered to ensure the best level of education and training. For her part, the chairman of the convention's scientific committee, Professor Gary Jeffrey, highlighted the major success of the convention. 16 specialists and consultants from the kingdom and around the world participated in the event, which attracted 330 workers of the healthcare sector globally. The Ministry of Health has launched the Rapid COVID-19 Test Service on a trial basis. The rapid test detects COVID-19 infections through a nasal swab with an accurate diagnosis of the patient's condition within 15 minutes without the need for a specialized laboratory. The new service is part of initiatives spearheaded by the National Task Force for Combating COVID-19 to facilitate tests and keep abreast of international developments. The Ministry said that the test results are the same as those currently approved in laboratory for PCR testing. However, it does not substitute a PCR examination and the result is positive. The rapid test characterized by ease of use in a practical and economical way in terms of the time it takes for therapeutic examination of nasal swabs by means of PCR examination. The rapid test can also be used in campaigns to examine the virus for a large number of people in a short period of time. The Minister of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 3,772 with 397 recoveries, 349 registered new cases and two deaths. 105 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 239 are contacts of active cases and five are travel related. The deceased were 68 and an 80-year-old female citizens. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to adhere to the rules and avoid public spaces when possible.